Ruthless Aggression. Top five moments of your WWE 24th of June 2002 edition of Raw. Let's go. It's the official start of the Ruthless Aggression, but in my opinion, apart from one great McMahon segment, there wasn't too much Ruthless stuff on this show. We did feel like people were maybe trying a little bit more. I felt some people were trying a bit too hard, especially Eddie Guerrero. He cut a shit promo to, um, I'm Ruthless Eddie. Off oh, evil ruthless and it's like whatever but anyway we, we've narrowed down all the segments all the matches into we've got our a overdose <laughs> <laughs> and we've, we've narrowed down our uh, top five segments here and this was difficult normally when you're doing the top five moments it's difficult because there's so many moments and you can't pick five but tonight it was like it was the opposite. There was barely any good stuff that happened on the show that it was hard to come up with five. But we've done that. We've managed to come up with five. We've got our list. So let's go. Coming in at number five it is Raven being kicked out the arena after he loses his loser leaves Raw match with Tommy Dreamer. So yeah, Raven gets kicked out. Security escort him out. He, he doesn't even get time to change or take a shower. He, he literally just gets led through the back. He, 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 conveniently, his bag is like waiting for him right beside the, the exit door. So I guess they must have went into his locker room and grabbed his bag and just planted it there for what him. purposes. He lifts it up. He walks out. He's about to say goodbye. He's about to walk into the cold night here in whatever city we're in. Can't remember the name of the city we were in tonight. But anyway, Matt Hardy's sitting there waiting for him. He's like, hello, Raven. And Matt Hardy attacks him, then tosses him into a car and then says, uh, you know, get, get basically that's his goodbye present. Raven's last appearance is getting beat up by Matt Hardy backstage in the parking lot. Yeah, it was, I actually enjoyed this. I feel like we had to put Raven on the, the top five moments to see him off down the road, but seeing wee bin bag dreadlocked, Raven hit the smack bonnet of that car was beautiful. Now, I loved it. it might be the last time you see him on Raw, but it won't be the last time you see him in our feds. Because coming in at number four, it is the loser leaves Raw match between Raven and Tommy Dreamer. And it was a shit match. Yeah, but <laughs> King King did say that this there's no King said this is like the most important match on Raw. And like, not I don't think I don't think he said history, but he, in he a made, long time he made the point that look, this is an important match. Oh, one of these jobbers are never going to be seen again. Oh my God, wrestling could change forever. Anyway, it was a win for Tommy Dreamer. It was a loss for Raven, and as we know, Raven ends up leaving the building. But yeah, it was an okay match. I mean, Tommy Dreamer literally hit his finisher. No one said anything, and then one, two, three, Raven was gone. So it was kind of weird. Plus, Tommy Dreamer's using a DDT as a finisher as well. So is Raven. It's two guys using a DDT and it just looks like an average DDT. Maybe in ECW it looked better, but in WWE it just when looks like... you on like 10,000 pounds of thumb tax. Just looks like a transitional move in my opinion. But anyway, that comes in at number four. Coming in at number three, we have... The whole McMahon, there was like a bunch of McMahon seg. There was like one segment, but with several people. We got McMahon, he books the match between Raven and Tommy Dreamer. That's a Raven heavy episode. He, he tells Sergeant Slaughter that he's never liked those two and that one of them's going to be gone. He put ECW to business, now he's going to put one of them to business. Then he walks into his. Uh, locker room or office or whatever where Jackie Gaeta is and she strips for him and McMahon is like mesmerised and then Undertaker walks in and he shits himself and then Taker just, you know, gives off to McMahon rants about nothing really. It wasn't great but McMahon booking the match and, you know, just McMahon acting the way McMahon does when there's a hot woman naked in front of him. It's, it's Vincent Kennedy McMahon. You can't get any better than Finney Mac at this, man. His facial expressions alone. I mean, you take McMahon out this Raw episode and we're looking at a very bleak Raw. But he carried it and he got the job done. And we love him. I feel like this segment did get worse as it carried on. And as soon as Tate got in, it just kind of died. I kind of died. The dead man. Anyway, up next, coming at number two, we have Goldust impersonating the Crocodile Hunter. R.I.P. Steve Irwin. So he grabs his wee cuddly toy... Crocodile, he heads into the NW locker room, he says, look at this I think this it was show. plastic, actually, I don't think it was cuddly. Cuddly fucking scuddly, man. The, the show Apotamus is in there, he's like, look at this big, ugly, fat bust. <laughs> it's a rare show Apotamus. Uh, he's sleeping, he's got, like, blindfolds on or something like that, and then X-Pac comes out and he's like, oh, it's a, it's a bandana rat. Sewer rat. I know for the sake of the segment, it works if he's sleeping, but why is he sleeping? He's a big, fat, lazy bastard. I don't That's know. pretty much it, but yeah, this leads to... 
X-Pac chasing gold dust and then a trash can led to the coupon of X-Pac. By Billy. Booker T. And Booker T tells X-Pac, can you dig that sucker? And X-Pac obviously couldn't dig it because he was laid out on the concrete. So I, that is our top, or our bottom four moments, I guess. Four, five through to number two. Coming at number one, though, it had to be this one. It was Vince McMahon basically... Cutting the promo that officially starts the Ruthless Aggression Era. Some people argue that it kind of started in the brand split, but I think this is the official start point. This is McMahon calling for Ruthless Aggression, so if that's not the start yet, then what is? Of course, in eras, you just get like wee limbo periods, and I feel like after Survivor Series 2001 till about now, it's kind of a limbo period. I feel like you couldn't call it Attitude Era, you can't call it Ruthless Aggression, it's kind of just an in-between. And this is the beginning of a new era, even if it felt very similar to, like, you know, the rest of the, uh, like, the Raws before. I feel like in the next couple of weeks when you see, like, Cena come in, slap angle, Ruthless Aggression, Brock becoming champ, that's when you properly get the Ruthless Aggression. But Finney Mac did a great job here, showing why he's the man, and why we need him. 2023, bring him back. Kick Triple H out, because Triple H is shite. See all those mentally ill people Triple H brought back to the roster? Send them back to fucking TJ. And that's it, guys. That is our top five moments. So, yeah, McMahon standing strong at the top of the list. Let us know your top five favourite moments for this Raw. If you didn't watch it, then I don't really blame you. You can just basically watch the opening segment and then tune off if you want it. Wasn't that great, but I tell you what, McMahon's always great. Till next time, we'll catch you in the next video. We've been Fog Wrestling. Thanks for watching. And peace.